Okay. Here we have our second tube. It's been pumping for two hours on the diffusion pump at a temperature of um, 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, since we have epoxy on the tube, we're not heating it to like 900 degrees. I, I don't know what happens when the epoxy gets close to its um, uh, maximum use point at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, but I didn't want to risk the tube this time, so I didn't heat it past 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, in order to <coughs> prepare for charging it, I have the neon tank connected onto the system, and it's also connected to the diffusion pump right now. And it has been pumping at the same uh, at the same rate. Um, see, we want it to where when we open the neon, we don't want to have air in the pipe that leads over to the system. So we pump that down um, beforehand so that when we're ready to charge it, we'll have pure neon. <coughs> now, this tube I made differently than the previous one. Okay, first off. I use soft glass. This is this is just an envelope off of an old vacuum tube. Uh, it wasn't the same one that came from the frit. Unfortunately, I broke that one. But I took another one and then sealed the tube onto it, an evacuation stem. And then, instead of making a lap joint, I just butted the two pieces together. I went ahead and built the uh, electrodes inside of it. This time I didn't do a whole lot of electrodes. I've only got one electrode and one anode in it. Um, this is just to test the epoxy seal. But I just butted the two together and then packed the epoxy around it. So we don't have any overlapping of the, of the glass. We, we have the epoxy itself being the actual joint between the two pieces of glass. Uh, it's sealed perfectly. Uh, there's no evidence of a leak whatsoever. Um, so now what I'm going to do is first we'll flash the getter. That will get rid of the air and it'll make it to where we seal it off, any air that, uh, it, or other gases that evolve, will get eaten up. Uh, the neon is not affected by the getter. It's a, it's a noble gas and it doesn't go into chemical combination. So right now, we'll go ahead and flash the getter. Um, <coughs> I'm just going to go ahead and um, First, I heat it up a little bit just to go ahead and drive the, the air out. The getter will release a tremendous burst of gas when you first heat it. Um, I, I'm not sure why this is, whether all of them do this or whether it's because this is a used getter, um, but they, they tend to release a tremendous burst of gas. So I go ahead and um, just heat it up a little bit and then let the vacuum system pump it down. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and flash it. Okay. Don't want to overdo it or we'll darken the envelope and we won't be able to see our digits glow. Okay, that flashed our getter. Now some people have uh, said, oh, you should flash the getter after you seal the tube off. Um, well, you know, you can do it either way. The flow of gas back into the tube at this pressure level is so slow that it makes no difference whether you do it before you seal it off or whether you do it after you seal it off. It makes no difference at all because the flow rate at molecular flow through a two-tenths inch diameter tube is so slow that the amount of getter that will be used by the micro minute amount of gas that gets back is insignificant. Insignificant to a degree that makes it to where it's of no concern whatsoever. So we flash them before we seal it off and that uh, that gets that done. Okay, um, picture will be a little different. I just changed cameras. This one's got a much better focus on it than the other one even though it's a cheaper camera. Okay, we've got a, a power supply here. This one is, is a uh, power supply that goes from 0 to 300 volts. Um, we have an 82K resistor in series with it for limiting the anode current. Okay, we've got that connected to the tube. OK, 
okay? Now, what I'm going to do, I don't have a gauge connected onto this thing. Um, unfortunately, the, the valve that I'm using right now does not have an extra connection for the gauge, so I'm going to just go ahead and bleed a little uh, neon into it. I'm going to first put the voltage to 300 volts. Okay, we've got 300 volts on the tube. So I'm going to close the high vacuum valve. Okay, the system is now closed off to where the tube is now isolated to the neon tank. Now I'm going to close the needle valve off and I'll put a small amount of neon into the thing and we're just going to see if we can get it to glow. Look at that. Woo! Got some glow. Alright, I'm going to add a little more. Okay. Interesting, okay. Alright, let's add a little more. Okay, it's... Okay. <laughs> Not so much for that. All right, I'm going to open the valve again, and um, wow! <laughs> I don't know what the hell that was. Okay, we're pumping her down. Here we go again. Okay, we're up to the limits of the gauge I have. Okay, there it lit up. Pressure is slowly going up. I'm going to go ahead and leave it. Close the valve off. I'm going to cut the voltage. That's 200 volts. 150, and it goes out at about 125 volts. Okay, I'm taking it back up. There's 200. Okay, we cannot fire the tube with 300 volts. So the initial firing voltage with just pure neon is a little bit high. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that and seal the tube off, and we'll just use a higher voltage power supply to test it. Okay, there's the tube. We've got power supply set at 500 volts, and we've got a... Um, 12K resistor. And there she is glowing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's our first working Nixie tube. Now, to test the seal, we're going to just leave it overnight and we'll see what it looks like in the morning. If it still lights and if the getter doesn't look like it's being used, then it means the seal is good. I mean, th this is to test the the validity of using the epoxy to seal the tube. This shows that we can do the glass work. It, it was not difficult to seal the evacuation stem onto the envelope. That, that turned out to be fairly easy. The annealing was not too bad. All right, tomorrow we'll try again. Okay, here we have the tube we made yesterday. Okay, I've got a 3300 ohm resistor in series with it.
Wow. Okay, that's with a tube voltage of 200 volts. We can see that heating, that's not too bad. Heating of the elements causes that, that flickering there. When, it, when a part of the element gets too hot, then it goes ahead and emits more than the rest of it. So we need a, a smaller um, current through it. I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, put a 10K resistor in series with it. Okay, here we are on day three. I'm not having much luck in getting the thing to light up. Okay, first, I'm going to go ahead and shut it off. If you look carefully, you can compare it to earlier in the video. Look at the getter now. See how much it's uh, receded up into the top of the cap? Clearly there is a, a, a slow leak. Probably through the epoxy. You know, it's probably leaking through the epoxy, actually permeating the epoxy itself. Because we're not getting a fast leak. If it was a fast leak, the getter would turn white. But being a very slow leak, it's just slowly um, evaporating. And we can see that we have lost about, um, oh, maybe 10% of the getter there. You know, the getter, it, it, when we first flashed, it was down maybe oh, a quarter of an inch onto the glass down here, and now it's receded up. So it indicates we are getting a leak. Now also, the characteristics of the tube have changed. No matter how I adjust... Okay, there it's giving us the wow. But I think that has more to do with the overheating of the tip of the... Um, of the electrode. That, that becomes extremely hot so all of the emission takes place from that that um, tip. Um, that's, that's a problem that uh, I'm not sure how to solve. I don't know what they do in, in Nixie tubes to keep them from doing that. But clearly this is not going to be a success. The design of the tube itself is bad because we, we overheat that W, the first W, and then all the emission, once that thing gets hot, all the emission takes place from the hot point on the filament, or not filament, but the electrode, and um, it won't light up the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the uh, electrode. So I'm dropping the uh, resistance right now in series with it, and it simply gets hotter and hotter as the current increases. Okay, that's at um, 30k ohms by ballast resistor. And I can cut the voltage. That's 450 volts. That's 400. That's 350. 300. Let's try with 300. No, it's, it's trying to light. There it is. Um, It, it's just um, that that's a problem that I'm not sure how to solve. I'll have to look and see if anybody out there on the web knows what to do about the electrodes overheating in one spot like that. So uh, it looks like this is not going to be successful. Okay, that's the end of this one. Now we'll go out to the leak detector and we'll see where the leak is. Okay, I've got another tube. Okay, this is the wow tube. This is the first tube, the one that we had the getter going bad. You can see the getter's completely gone. Now that I cut it open, um, it completely used up the getter. I went ahead and sealed a, uh, another evacuation stem onto it with JB Weld and got the leak detector hooked up and running. And we're going to see if we can see on here where the leak is through that epoxy. Okay, I'm sitting on the most sensitive scale now. You can watch the meter here. I'm just going to start bleeding the uh, helium here. There's a leak somewhere.
Well. I'm just going around the seam of the epoxy and over the epoxy. I'll go around the top of the seam. Now I'm not seeing any leaks anywhere, which is good. Which is very good. Because there's one other possibility for that getter being used, and that's just the normal outgassing of the tube. We didn't bake this one at 900 degrees, so it had a lot of gas in it. And over the days, that will come out. That, that normally will be what causes a tube to fail that doesn't have a getter in it. So it's very possible that that's what the leakage was. Or the getter usage, I mean, was. Because I'm not seeing any leak here, and I'm on the most sensitive scale of the leak detector, which is, uh, you know, it, it would um, be a leak so small that it wouldn't show up in the getter at all. We're not seeing any leak at all. Okay, what I'm going to assume then is that what was going on is that it was just the normal outgassing of the tube and it would have just gone to a certain point and if the getter got used up then it would have continued to outgas and ruin the tube. But I think the getter would have probably had enough to go ahead and absorb it all because we're not seeing any leak here at all. This epoxy is 100% secure. So it looks like both this Armstrong epoxy will work to go ahead and make Nixie tubes to seal them. So we do not have to use hot glass technique to go ahead and seal the tubes. That, that's a very good um, indication. Okay, I'm going to call this a perfect tube. I mean, there, there is no leak. So what was using the getter up in that tube over the past three days was just the normal outgassing of the envelope because we did not bake the tube out at high temperatures. We, we could not bake the tube out at high temperatures because we had epoxy on it that would have disintegrated. So that meant that we did not completely outgas the tube uh, during pump down and that meant that um, that gas would evolve out of the walls of the tube over time and that's what was eating that getter up. Okay, we'll go ahead and shut her down and, and that's it for this. That's a very good indication. Okay, here we have a second tube that we've made up. Now this one, um, instead of using Armstrong A12, I've used cheap hardware store JB Well. This is just that plain old JB Quick that you get at any hardware store or grocery store or anywhere else. Now, not only that, I did not use heat to seal the evacuation stem on. I used JB Weld to put the evacuation stem on as well. I'm trying to do an entire tube here without having to have special glass blowing equipment. I'm going to use a standard propane torch to go ahead and seal off the tip. I'm not going to use the oxygen torch. So we'll see if we can get away with that. Now this one here, uh, I just have the letters JB inside of it. I didn't put a lot of electrodes. Um, so we'll go ahead first, we'll flash the getter. We'll flash the getter and then um, hook electricity onto it and see what it does. We still have it on the vacuum system. It's been pumping for um, four hours. Um, the first two hours at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. I had no idea what would happen with the JB well. Okay, that's a preheat to let the flash of um, air get blown out of it. I'm just going to heat it up a few times to get that, that initial surge of air out of it. Let the vacuum system pump it away. All right, we're going to flash it. Okay, that's our getter. Okay, 
We've got the 300 volt power supply connected to it again, or, or this time. Okay, I set the voltage. Okay, we're at 300 volts applied to the tube. I'm going to close the vacuum valve. I've left the heat, the neon connection from the previous tube. Okay, we now have the tube isolated from the diffusion pump. I'm going to open up the uh, bleed valve a little bit and let a little bit of neon in and we'll see if it'll light up. There she goes. Okay. All right, that's the proper pressure right there. We don't have enough current from the power supply with that 12K. Okay, I put a 3300 ohm resistor in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try reducing the pressure a little bit. I'm going to open the vacuum valve just a little bit. All right. Open it too much. It's very difficult. It's a motorized valve. Very difficult to control. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put some more neon in it. Build the pressure up. Oh, look at that. Building the pressure slowly but surely. I'm just letting the pressure bleed in slowly with the needle valve. I have no gauge on it, so I have to just look at the, the glow to tell where it's uh, correct. Okay, that's going to be it. The J is starting to go out over here, so it would take more current. Okay, but that looks very good right there. That looks very good. Okay, that's full 300 volts there. As we go down, that's 200 right there. That's a little below 200. Okay, it fires at 200 and goes out. Okay. And at 300 volts with a 3.3K resistor, we have it um, fully lit. Okay, let's see if we can seal it off. Now, this time to seal it off, I'm just going to use a plain old torch. This is just a, a hardware propane torch that you get at any hardware store. Use plain old propane. And I'm going to try to seal it off with that. You know, the flame is big. You see, the flame is pretty big on that thing, but uh, we might be able to get away with it. Let's just try. I don't want to get too close to the um, epoxy or it might ruin it. With a brushy flame like this, there's not really much chance of shattering the, the little bitty tubing. I'll take it slow at first. I can smell epoxy, so i got to be very careful there. Okay, we're starting to flare. I need one of the little butane torches. It's starting to collapse. Okay, we're sealed off. There it is. There it is. It's got, <laughs> it's got a heck of a tip on it. But uh, without having a, a, a finer point um, torch, you know, you know, it wouldn't be a very good idea to sit there and it's about as close as this camera will go. You can see what it looks like here. We just have the JB weld. I did the exact same thing on this one as the other one. I just butted the two together and then smeared the JB around it and let it harden. Now this stuff hardens in, in about five minutes, so it was very easy to hold it by hand while it's set up. Okay, the tip, same way. 
Ah, that's a little hot yet. I just took that JB weld, took the diamond uh, burr, and roughened up the glass on both pieces, and then just packed the JB around it. So, um, now what we have to do is let this one sit overnight, too, and, and see how long it'll last, whether the vacuum will hold up. All right, here's our JB tube that we just got through with. Uh-oh, bad news. Bad news, see that purple glow? Air, that's air. Okay, the JB did not hold up. I got 500 volts on it. It looks beautiful with air, but it's not going to hold up. I mean, that tube's going to eventually uh, gas up completely. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this tube open, or cut the stem off it, and I'm going to fasten another stem onto it, and I'm going to connect it to the helium leak detector and see if it's possible to tell where, where the leak is. But we have so much of a leak that... Um, you know, it's aired up in just this, this 15, oops, look at that. No chance. Okay, so that was not a success. Not a success. But what I wonder is whether the leak is on the evacuation stem where um, I heated it with the uh, propane torch. Possibly next time I'll take it and wrap some um, some aluminum foil around it to shield the flame away from the epoxy. But I don't think I got it that far. I was, I was way down here. So I don't think that I hit that epoxy enough to um, cause it to go bad. I mean, it says on the JB package it's good up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. But I don't know whether that means it completely disintegrates and lets go at 300 or whether it's a working temperature of 300. Okay, we have the tube. This is the JB weld tube. We've got it on the leak detector. We've been pumping it down for a couple hours to go ahead and get the leak detector working. We're all zeroed out. And I've got the helium to where it puts out just a small bubble off the end of the probe. You can see the meter here. If we get a... Alright, right on zero. Now, I'm going to just start playing the helium over the um, tube. Alright, clearly we're getting a leak there. Okay. Let's see if I can find the exact spot where it is. Okay, we get it right there. I'm going to go to a less sensitive scale. Okay. Okay, we're getting no leak at all around the stem. So we had a good seal on the stem. <coughs> I'm just going around the very bottom of the edge of the epoxy here to see if I can see a leak on it. Now, I've gone all the way around the bottom edge of the epoxy. Now I'm going to try going around the top. Wow. Okay, I'm going to go to a less sensitive scale. So we're getting a tremendous leak there. I'm going just around the edge of the epoxy.
Now we're getting a big leak when I go right on the top. Now I'm going around the body of the epoxy. I'm just taking the probe right on the body of the epoxy. But what I'm starting to suspect is the epoxy is not the leak. Okay, we're not seeing any leak there. But when we go in the top of the tube here, or the base... Okay, I'm going to go on the pins now and see. Okay, nothing there. Looks like that pin there. See, when I go right on that pin, we get a tremendous movement of the needle. Okay, let's try some of the other pins. Okay, we get no movement at all on that one. None on that one. Okay, and this one. I'm not sure we're getting a leak on that one or whether we're just next to this one here. This one here clearly is leaking. See, when I hold the probe next to this pin, we clearly are getting a leak. Now, I'm going to, to prove that it's not the epoxy, I'm going to just go to the epoxy there. And you see, we don't get any leak on the epoxy. So it's, it's definitely, the leak is on this pin right here. Now this indicates that the epoxy still may be a success. I'm just, just playing the helium around on the epoxy to see if I can find any place that we have an indication of a leak. And on the base, I mean on the uh, evacuation stem, we're getting no indications of leaks anywhere. This is all JB weld. This is JB weld. This is not the expensive epoxy. So this is a good indication. The leak is actually on this pin right here. The glass, the glass feed through on that pin. None of the other pins. I don't know. I'm going to go to a more sensitive scale. No. It's, it's that pin right there that's leaking. I'm seeing that down between that pin also there's a leak. Oh, I see the leak. Okay. There it is. Okay, it's all over. It's it's all over. Okay. I don't know if I can get the camera on it. The leak is extremely obvious. I don't know if this will work. If you look, between these two pins, there's a crack in the glass. I don't think it'll show up on the camera. It just won't do a macro focus. But that's where the leak is. Okay, so it was not the epoxy that failed. Okay, we're going to make another one using JB Weld, and we'll try again. That's the end of this experiment.